Well, today, I hope to flare up your budget EDC pocket knife collection. Well, welcome folks to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. I am your host, Aaron, and we are looking at the SOG Flare today. Uh, you know, I love SOG knives, uh, particularly in their lightweight EDC realm. Majority of the knives that they d have designed, I've always gravitated to. They hit a good price point to materials, deep red pocket clips, uh, just a lot of features, you know, that connect with me, particularly when I'm looking for lightweight EDC tools. But the majority of those type of knives come in between $40 and $60. This one comes in at a lower price point that we're going to talk about today. And so uh, when I saw this hit the market, I said, you know, what? I got to pick one of these up to see if it has the features as well as materials that would connect with somebody who's on a really tight budget, but likes lightweight EDC knives that are open assisted. So that's what we're gonna look at today. So this has, I believe, a lot of punch, a lot of potential. We're gonna discuss all that today and see whether or not the SOG Flare is something you should totally consider when you're on that tight budget, but you want a solid lightweight EDC knife. So let's go ahead, see what this thing has to offer and take a look. All right, the business end of the blade on the Flare. Really like the, the clip point, you know, classic design. Satin blade, really dig that. Hollow grind with that nice swedge right here into that good precise tip that's not too weak. It's not too thin. I really like that a lot. Really good. You're looking at about 0 0.12 on overall thickness. Three and a half inches overall. Cutting edge is going to be like 3.4. Very, very small ricasso. You get be able to get right up on the blade so you have good control. Uh, and it's really minute, but you can kind of see that the blade almost flares up and out to this transition point of the clip. And the clip is not sharp, by the way. Um, it just gives extra strength there um, into the, the blade and the tip. And then that uh, simple hollow grind on 8CR13 MOV steel. Seen the steel around for a long time. You know, um, for the price point that we'll discuss here in a little bit. It's uh, very doable. You know, it's pretty close to what SOG does with their OS 8. You'll get a little bit longer edge retention out of the OS 8 version. It's a budget steel. It's super easy to tune up, super easy to get an edge on, razor sharp, razor hair popping sharp out of the box. And with all of the work that I'm running in here for you guys, I did this in one sitting on one tuning up. You know, I just, I got it out of the box. It was razor sharp. I just like putting my own edges on it. So I just did ceramic rod. That's all I did was about two minutes with a ceramic rod to really get the edge, you know, just super fine tuned. Then I went out into the backyard and I was like, let's do this, you know, and just went to town. Cardboard boxes uh, of every type, you know, just go boom, boom, boom. Going through uh, cordage, you know, um, paracord, did that and then did hemp rope. Hemp rope, you know, is a great tester for blades in that regard. And then did seat belts, went through all of that, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, lots of different foam and uh, super thick, heavy cardboard tubing. You know, it's like six layers of cardboard went great through that uh, without having to, um, you know, feel like I was binding up too much or uh, dulling the blade. Then going through plastics, you know, the, the rubber that we um, kind of uh, have, have been testing for a long time, the edging, you know, that uh, you can do back in the garden, that type of stuff. And, and even did a little bit of wood carving you know, just to, to see if you could do a feather stick with it and do a great job with the wood as well and still had a very um, usable edge. After all of that, I wasn't sitting there going like, all right, now I got to tune this thing up. I'm like, no, I can, I'm, I still have the exact same edge as you uh, have seen in the original testing. Haven't tuned it up since, since then and I'm not planning on it for a little while until I start to sense that it's dulling. So um, good heat treat on the HCR 13 MOV. It's still super budget steel and you will have to tune it up pretty frequently like once a week uh, is what you're going to see but for the price point i think it's very doable and getting you with all the features we're going to be looking at today a very usable very functional edc kind of do everything knife with some cool features at a very reasonable price so the handle on the flare is similar to a lot of the other sog knives out there glass reinforced nylon uh, so it's going to be lightweight and durable Never had any sort of cracking or issues or flexing, you know, with my SOG knives over the years. Now, this is going to be four and a half inches long. It's going to be 0.55 inches thick and is going to weigh in at 3.2 ounces. So nice and lightweight for the knife. Really dig that a lot for this larger knife, you know, being three and a half inches. 
really digging that. And the w main thing that I noticed compared to uh, its older brother, the Flash 2, which has been super popular, you know, full flat grind, three and a half inch blade, OS 8, um, is that I was never a really big fan of the way the handle was cut out on the Flash 2. Uh, the, some of the, the cutouts were just a little awkward for me. The, the way it was designed, it never really connected with me. I was way more of like a Sog Aegis or Trident type of handled guy. Uh, and this one is more uh, comfortable and more ergonomic, in my opinion, than the Flash 2. So if you've always had a problem with the Flash 2, or maybe you're, you're a little concerned with the, the cutouts and are they going to fit your hand right, this one is more natural. You, know, you're ha you don't have any sort of thumb ramp. You have some nice blocked out jimping that's going to give you a little traction there. Just a very natural setup there. So I really like the handle ergonomics uh, in compared to most of uh, the Flash 2 line and even some of the other SOGs that are out there. It's just very natural. Zero complaints in that regard. It is a little bit big and boxy, you know, four and a half by 0.55. So uh, it, it doesn't cause any problems for me. It's lightweight, which is great, you know, being 3.2 ounces for a three and a half inch blade. And it's going to give me all the, the comfortability, zero hot spots that I would want. It's, it is just a, a little bit larger than a lot of other pocket knives that you may find out there just in its kind of girth, if you will. So if you have larger hands, I think you will absolutely love this if you have. So as I've been hinting throughout the video, uh, this thing's going to hit $30, which is about $10 less than any of SOG's other OS 8 steel versions out there of other knives that they offer. Here's a mini Trident. You know, there's the full-size Trident. Uh, they have the Flash 2, um, the Aegis models, uh, a lot of knives out there that are very similar, have very similar materials, pocket clips, all of that, except that the blade steels are usually OS 8. Obviously, that is something that you need to weigh and consider. But I, I think for um, the price, there's not a lot else out on the market that has this kind of lightweight, different feel than, say, like a Kershaw or something like that. Um, it's in that same kind of price range as a lot of Kershaw Chinese made open assisted knives. You're just going to get some different, you know, design features that you may either be bored of with other designers, which I, I really like a lot. And really the only thing that kind of comes close and it's not open assisted would be an OS 8 version of a RAP Model 1. Very similar in size, dimensions, those type of things. Now that will be OS 8 um, A and they don't do as good a heat treat as SOG does. So you're gonna get very similar edge retentions, almost exactly the same with this 8CR as you would with a RAP Model 1, and that's gonna be about $25 to $30 as well. So we will have links in the description below over to Blade HQ as well as Amazon if this knife connects with you or any knives in general or any gear that we test out and review here connects with you when you guys use the Amazon and Blade HQ hyperlinks. Helps me get out there, buy gear just like this guy. Went out, picked this up for you to do a test and review to see if it would be something that I would purchase, something that I could recommend to you. So I really appreciate it when you guys use those hyperlinks. You just look in the description right below the video, takes you over there and you can purchase any of the gear that you see in this video or any of our other videos and it really helps us out so I really appreciate it when you guys use those hyperlinks. But guys, for $30, I mean, I think you're getting a, a really good bang for buck in the design. All right, we're gonna go ahead and look at some main features here that the knife offers in the sense of deployment, lockup, and that type of thing. So uh, we are looking at thumb studs on either side that are really nice, really pronounced well, really dig that a lot. Very easy for you to engage the blade regardless if it's righty or lefty. Open assisted. You can see there I can do it one-handed. It's a little tricky. You just gotta be careful um, in what you're doing because the spring is strong, but you can do it. So there's the deployment. Uh, the lockup itself, I think they call it their arc system. I'll annotate it if I'm forgetting, but it's the same system that they've been using for a long time. I hope you guys can see, yeah, there you go. You can see that little bar basically is being controlled by the little attachment here. Uh, like every SOG I've ever owned, and I've owned about seven of their assisteds over the years, there's slight play right and left, ever so slight up and down. Now, I've never had a SOG fail on me, used a lot of them over the years. Some people complain and hate it. I have never had an issue with it and don't mind it for what SOG knives are, which are usually light duty EDC blades. Uh, I have zero complaints with it. Even with some of the harder tasks I was surprised with, even some liner locks that I'm testing right now from US companies, um, uh, were not working very well with some of the rubber that I was going through and edging. Don't mind Tommy the trail dog, he's sn smelling something. Um, but the, the uh, super heavy duty plastic 
edging uh, that I went through, it, it worked really well, you know, and I, and I didn't have any sort of like wobbling or felt like I was uh, going to lose the locking mechanism. So zero complaints in that regard. It does have uh, um, a little safety. Red is dead so that you can use it. You push that little tab down, it will not deploy. So uh, if that is something you're not a fan of, you can just put a little tiny piece of super glue. I've never once in all my years of carrying SOG knives accidentally engaged it when I didn't want to or disengaged it when I didn't want to. So um, no real issues there. Some of you will like that, particularly um, like spouses, uh, you know, like wives, girlfriends, uh, particularly if there are kids around and they're just gonna throw this in a purse, something like that, you know, that's just a little added extra safety mechanism so it doesn't accidentally deploy in a purse or, uh, you know, if a kid gets their hands on it before you can, you know, realize what's going on. So um, zero complaints in that regard. And then uh, perfect centering, zero complaints with that also. Really nice, zero issues with the flare and its lockup, deployment, and safety mechanisms. So SOG is super well known for years of having good pocket clips that are deep ride tip up only, and this is no exception. It is ambidextrous, so you can swap it, righties, lefties. Great loop over design there. Really nice, just enough flex to get over those thicker pocket uh, um, edges, you know, that have been reinforced, maybe like 511 tactical pants, that type of thing. Really nice, zero complaints in that regard. Really a uh, small lanyard hole. That is something I just wanted to touch on. If you're really into lanyards, you're gonna, you can't use 550 paracord. You're gonna have to use one of the smaller, kind of like bank line or kind of that like smaller paracord uh, that you use like for zipper pulls and that type of thing to run through there. That would be my only critique with the attachment systems that are available, just a little bit larger pocket clip or excuse me, um, lanyard hole would have been uh, a benefit. I don't usually do lanyards on pocket knives like this, but uh, the pocket clip is ambidextrous and awesome. Well, there we have it, guys. I really hope this video has helped you out decide whether or not the SOG Flare will light up your EDC system, or if it's better just to pass and go with one of SOG's OS8 versions of their other designs that they have. Uh, thank you so much for coming over here today, checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear you guys' thoughts. Um, and particularly when you guys share it, you know, let your friends and family know about this video and just the channel in general. We're always growing the community and the family that we have here. If you're not a current subscriber and I'd invite you to become part of the GT family, throwing up videos like this every single week, giving you guys content so you can make wise decisions and learn about gear as well as uh, make wise decisions when it comes to purchasing gear. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.